Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this video, Lynette Sang discusses the historic 46% meltdown in long-term bonds, a development that rivals the burst of the dot-com bubble. She raises a critical question. Is this the worst U.S. bond sell-off since 1787? Not 1987, not even 1887, but all the way back to 1787. Lynette believes that this marks the end of the era of free money. In this video, we will delve into the key takeaways from Lynette's video, examining the implications of this bond market turmoil and how it might affect your financial well-being. Lynette Zhang points out that the significant meltdown in the bond market signals the conclusion of the era of easy money. Central banks around the world have pumped massive amounts of liquidity into the financial system, which has artificially suppressed interest rates for years. The bond market's recent turmoil is a wake-up call that the era of abundant, cheap credit is coming to an end. Lynette emphasizes that the wealth transfer has already begun, and the gap between income and wealth will likely widen. The bond market crisis is contributing to this wealth shift as the value of traditional investments, like bonds, is under threat. Lynette suggests that owning tangible assets like gold and silver can help protect your wealth during turbulent times. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Historic 46% meltdown rivals burst of dot-com bubble. Yeah, you think? Worst U.S. bond sell-off since 1787. 17, not 1987, not even 1887, 1787. You think that marks the end of the free money era? Uh, what that really means, what they're trying to tell you, is get to flip and cover. Get a safe haven asset. Hold it, own it. You keep it in this, that's what you're looking at because that's what creates this. This is a debt-based currency. Thank you so much. And boy, hasn't the wealth already transferred? Have we heard about the difference between income and wealth? That's gonna get a whole lot worse because that is the design carnage from the bond market where the route is worse than anything you'll find in the history books is spreading and the implications are nasty what else do you need to know to get to safety and to make sure that you can survive by creating the ability to, to maintain a reasonable standard of living because everybody's going to be impacted by this even people that own gold and silver now they're gonna be a whole lot less impacted because they're gonna have real money to buy what they need. This is, this is what I use for barterability. So community, community, we have to come together because we vote with our wallets. What are you going to vote for? This is my vote. As well as food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Get it done or become part of the community. So one person can do one thing, the other person can do another thing, and you can come together to help each other because that's what community is all about. And we need both a global community and we need a local community. And that's what thriverscommunity.com is all about. Come and help us, time is running short. Wider war in Middle East could tip the, the world economy into, a we're already going into a recession. Point fingers. Don't look in the mirror and own your part in it, you flipping central banks, you flipping governments. I'm sorry, I'm so angry at them because their job is to lie and lie and lie some more. War always accompanies a currency regime shift. Look over here. Can I say, and I'm, I'm telling you, what's happening in the Middle East is horrendous. It's horrendous. But I can't sit here and tell you that there wasn't a plan for it, just like Russia and Ukraine. I can't sit here and tell you that because they're all part of the IMF. All those treasury secretaries, all those central bank chiefs, they get together regularly and they have an agenda and they have a plan and they execute it slowly, but they want distance. They say it in almost every single report I ever read from them. 
Lynette stresses the importance of communities coming together during challenging economic times. By joining forces, individuals can support one another and make informed decisions to safeguard their financial stability. She mentions that barterability, wealth preservation, and community building are vital aspects of preparing for an uncertain future. Lynette highlights the interconnectedness of global events and how they can impact local economies. She mentions that ongoing conflicts, such as the situation in the Middle East, can have profound effects on the world economy. Additionally, she urges individuals to take responsibility for their financial well-being and not solely rely on central banks and governments. Lynette connects the rise of perpetual central banking with the era of perpetual wars. She explains that central banks were initially chartered for specific timeframes, but this changed in 1927, when a central bank was granted a perpetual charter. This shift has had significant implications for monetary policy and financial stability. Lynette discusses how inflation erodes the purchasing power of money. While treasury bonds may offer a steady stream of income, the real value is eroded by inflation. This makes the pursuit of wealth preservation more crucial, especially for individuals seeking financial security. They want distance between their policy choices and how it is introduced to the public because they do not want you or me to know that it's coming from them. Let's go cashless. Let's have the retail public introduce that. And a lot have co been complying. I prefer the ones that prefer cash myself because this is just gonna be the excuse for the hyperinflation that quite honestly has already begun. And many think, and I'm one of them, but many people think that we are already in World War III. And as Ron Paul said, there is not a coincidence that the era of world wars and perpetual wars went, uh, okay, this isn't an exact quote, went hand in hand with the era of perpetual central banking. Because up until actually 1927, every central bank had a charter. In other words, their lifespan was either 15 to 20 years. And originally the Federal Reserve was also born with that charter, 20 years. That would have put it at, hmm, what date was that? 1933. And in 1927, for the first time ever, a central bank was gifted a perpetual charter. And this is where we are. But who did that help? Who did that benefit? Not you or me. And when you have mainstream coming out and talking about the wild bond market volatility shows the loss of anchors and treasuries had their worst day since March by one measure. He hopes the Fed keeps rates unchanged in the next two meetings because is that going to really fix things? No. It is not. That bubble has already popped and our future is in the hands of traders. And you could say that one way, trading for a little bit of property or a little bit of pickup in this garbage. And you can say it in another way. Traders. Because our founding fathers wanted good money, not this crap that historically has been debased over 4,800 times. Yeah, yeah, I mean, to me, this is just heartbreaking because I have children and I have grandchildren. I'll have great grandchildren and so will you because everybody is our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. And we have to come together to say no and time is running out to do that. What you're looking at here is a relative performance chart between the 10-year treasury yield versus spot gold, okay? Because in theory, well, in reality, gold pays no interest. It doesn't have to. It's the safest darn thing that you can do. Lynette expresses concerns about the rise of a digital surveillance economy and the erosion of privacy. She urges individuals to be vigilant and take steps to protect their personal information and resist the push towards a cashless society, which she believes may accelerate hyperinflation. Lynette draws parallels between the current economic situation and historical events, such as the transition from a gold-backed currency to a fully fiat-based currency. She emphasizes the importance of learning from history to make informed financial decisions. 
Bonnet refutes claims by commercial banks that they won't incur losses on their treasury holdings. She argues that commercial banks are at risk of significant losses due to their exposure to these bonds. Lynette concludes by reiterating that the evidence points to the ongoing deterioration of the financial system's foundation. She warns that individuals need to be proactive in their financial planning to mitigate risks. So, hey, the treasury bond, it is a debt instrument, and that pays you these. Oh, wouldn't you rather have more of these? Then you don't have to have any interest on this. It's the safest darn thing you can do. But at the same time, inflation by design erodes what you can buy with this. So you're getting paid less and less for the work that you do without you realizing it. And now the unions are demanding more money because the inflation is more obvious. The rise of the people has begun. Are we going to have a revolution? Well, I hope it's not a violent revolution. I hope we vote with our wallets and say no to their CBDCs, their digital surveillance economy, their ability to plant things in your head so that they can control everything you do or put, put it in your earbuds that you're listening to. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I grew up in a time where privacy mattered. But I also think that the experience of the transition from at least a quasi gold backed currency into a full fiat debt based currency, I have that history. I remember what that was like. You guys that are out there that are a similar age as baby boomers, remember that? Remember how chaotic it was? Remember the Vietnam War? Remember the inflation and the stock markets decline? and everything else that was going on. Civil rights, women's lib, lots of things for you to focus on so that you're not focusing on how they sold you down the river. Nixon said, hey, if you just buy American, everything's good. Lies, lies, lies. Because their job is to keep you vulnerable. My job is to help you make educated choices that puts your best interest first. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Do you really think that treasuries are a safe haven? Cause they're not. Bank of America, oh wow, hey, we, we don't anticipate any losses on our held to mature. That is such garbage. These commercial banks are drowning in losses from their treasury portfolio. The worst route since 1787. Poof, it's nothing. It's just that those that create those derivative, those risk bets, control whether or not there is an event from it. And they're opaque markets. We can't see it until it's too late. But all, everything I'm showing you today, everything, everything that I've been showing you for years and years and years is showing you the deterioration of the foundation. I don't know how to make it more visible until it's too late for you to make choices.